Hey everyone, it's Ray Robinson, your favorite Florida mortgage broker, and I hope you're doing awesome. And these are the Central Florida numbers here covering through the end of March. So they're the April numbers, but they cover through the end of March. I'm going to just run through the numbers and then give you my opinion on how it's going to affect housing prices, inventory, and all the things that matter either if you own a house or are thinking of buying a house this year. And hey, do me a favor if you think the video is useful like it. If you're going to buy a house or buy investment property, subscribe to the channel, especially if you're looking at here in Central Florida, as I keep you up to date with all the things that are relevant in our market. And again, these are the numbers for April, which cover through the end of March 2021. Okay, so here's the first relevant number. My opinion is interest rates, right? I'm in the mortgage business. Rates have been moving up. Uh, right now, they said February, the average rate was 2.88. They're saying in March was 3.07. Again, remember, always with rates, depends on credit score, how much you're putting down, are you buying the rate down, you know, all these factors. But in general, the point is rates are moving up. And when you look at a chart for the last five years, rates are still at record lows. So they're not really, in my mind, a huge factor yet, except for that people do know that they're moving up and that can create a sense of urgency. So, um, so one, one interesting thing I think is look at March of 2020 instead of last month. In March of 2020, there were 7,341 properties on the market into the opportunities to buy. And of those, 5,500 of those were houses. Go to 2021 March, there's 2,878 total opportunities to buy a house. That's almost a third less. And there's 1,800 homes on the market, about 1,600 less. And the exact number is 1,814. And again, it's the same if you're buying a condo. There was 1,162 condos in March of last year. Now there's 762. And if you're buying a townhome, there was 680. And now there's 302. So that's simple math to realize the entire market, as far as homes available or opportunities to buy, have went down by more than 60 to almost 70%. And that is just absolutely crazy. And March and February were pre-COVID. So um, that is just amazing to me. And, and the more interesting part of that is that the, there were 3,200 homes closed in March of 2020, where in March of 21, that's 4,286. So a thousand more sales closed but there was triple the inventory. I don't even know how that makes sense. That's just mind blowing. Um, so that just tells you if you've watched the news or heard, or heard stories about how competitive the market is, that's because it's true. And I've said this in other videos, it's probably the most unfriendliest first time home buyer market I've ever seen because you are competing against monsters. People that are selling their houses, have big down payments, great credit, doing conventional loans, and right now, the, you know, the FHA buyers, the low down payment buyers, something that, you know, I really prided myself on over the years is because I look at this as, you know, the job as an opportunity to create home ownership for a lot of first time home buyers. I remember being a first time home buyer and right now it is tough. So it doesn't mean that it can't happen. It just means that you're going to have to be patient and houses are not going under asking. Um, and so that's also a big adjustment. So you are competing against people that are paying over appraised value. Now, a lot of the houses are still appraising. So even though someone offers a house uh, and you pay more, so often the house will appraise for that higher amount because appraisers do adjust as the market goes up as well. And then, of course, you do have people paying over appraised value. So again, some other numbers there were, you know, if I look at from last month, which is, you know, February, there was 2,063 homes on the market. March, there's uh, 1,814. So again, just another reduction from last month as well. Um, there were 456 houses withdrawn. The average time on the market is 48. Um, and new houses under contract were 5,800. So uh, that's just incredible numbers. The 48 days on the market tells me that houses are just selling. It takes 30 to 45 days to close uh, and then houses on the market 48 means houses are selling just extremely fast as soon as they you know get on the market if they're priced anywhere competitive and they're in a good area or any area they're selling really fast the medium prices um, is about 285 but if you look at the average which runs a little higher it's about 347 so I mean 
in general, if you're out there looking, you know, most of the, most of the houses that are probably where a lot of people want to be that sweet spot in central Florida is right around 300,000. So under 200, there's really just not much out there, which, you know, just a couple years ago, that was very common. People looking two to 250. Now that doesn't mean all areas that are obviously every area is different. So basically, you know, so what does that mean? I mean, obviously inventory is low. Rates are still low, though going up a little bit. Um, so what is that going to mean for housing prices? And, you know, if you're thinking of buying a house, selling a house here as we go through 2021. Okay, so this is not rocket science, but it means it's gonna be tough if you're on the other end of that transaction called being a buyer. Now, if you're a seller, you're getting the appreciation. Now, I will say a lot of times people are selling a house to buy a house and you might almost look at that as a lateral move, meaning if you've owned the house for five years and you've got all this appreciation and you buy another house, you know, you're buying it at current prices. So really you're kind of exchanging that equity. Maybe you're eliminating mortgage insurance or doing different things because you have a bigger down payment. Of course, rates are lower, so the payment might be lower. But in general, you know, you're cashing in your equity at the current prices. So, you know, one of the questions I get obviously all the time, are prices gonna fall? Is inventory gonna grow? And really long term, I always have the same answer, which is prices uh, in all markets adjust for all kinds of different factors. And the real estate market, stock market, and gold market, you know, precious metal, whatever market is going to have swings both directions. So it's really hard to know and time the markets, though. You know, if you were waiting three years ago for the market to change, man, did you make a mistake? I really believe 2021, from everything I've read, and watched is going to be very similar. Um, builders are building houses as fast as they can. There's only so much real estate out there. The demand is high and we happen to live in a state where a lot of people want to be, you know, for lots of different reasons. You know, biggest one being we don't have a state income tax. So I can tell you I'm doing loans from California and New York and people coming here in record numbers and they're willing to pay a little more. Often they're selling a house uh, at a much higher market over there and buying houses cash. So again, that's, and then you've got millennials, uh, Central Florida is like top 10% or top 10 I read for millennials wanting to move the area. So it's going to be more of the same to 2020. What, what could slow the market down or maybe help with inventory? You know, as we go through this, uh, rest of this forbearance and see what lenders do there, there'll probably be some homes come on the market, builders are building and rates will creep up, I think, you know, the Fed keeps saying not till really next year they're going to look at it, but, you know, they can change that in a dime. They have said that many times and then adjust rates. So I think 2021, probably, you know, 2022, not going to be a huge change as far as pricing goes. I think you do see appreciation slow at some point. Who knows when that will be? Um, and I think at some point you will get more inventory. Uh, again, who knows when that will be? So if you are a buyer and you can buy now, I would say if you're patient and you put offers in, you're eventually going to get a house. Obviously, I get buyers every day that get their offers accepted, um, but you do have to, you know, go through the steps. Put offers in, be competitive, be fully pre-approved, all the way. You know, it's helpful to be doing a conventional loan right now. And if you're not sure exactly where you're at, if you could buy, how much you qualify for, you know, what kind of rates are you going to qualify for? or you just kind of want to know anything about buying a home right now, reach out to me. That's what we do every day. Super transparent. You can Google me, you know, lender fees, easy to work with. I feel like we have to earn your business uh, all the way through in every single transaction, which is why we charge no upfront cost at all to work with us. So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions on real estate, the market or financing, let me know. With that, have a great day. Hope you're having an awesome year here and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.